Hello! Today I'm excited to be able to share with you two IBM computers from the dawn of personal computing. These two computers were separated by only one year, but they are very different systems. First up is the IBM Display Writer. This Display Writer I spent about two months restoring. It was also known as the IBM 6580. It used 8 inch floppy disks and was used as a word processor. So this was marketed toward um, secretaries, data entry, that kind of thing. This would be able to be networked either with mainframes or with IBM mid-range systems. The other system I have is this IBM personal computer. This was released in 1981. The PC you see here has been upgraded quite a bit. This is a color display. Actually, the display on the original IBM PC as it originally came would have been almost identical to this display. But that's where the similarities really end. The biggest difference you're gonna notice right off the bat is this giant eight inch floppy drive. This is what those disks look like. You can see, eight inch floppy there. I've actually got it booted right now into its main application that it runs, which is called TextPack. In comparing these systems, the first thing to point out is that once again, there have been some upgrades to the IBM personal computer, but really the only thing visually is going to be the display. Now, the display writer has an 8086 processor, which you'll recognize, x86, 8086, right? This is part of that lineage. While the IBM PC has an 8088. The 8088, while sounding like a more advanced version, it's a larger number, which normally with an Intel processor means it's, it's faster or better. The 8088 is actually a stripped down 8086. So this is a less functional processor, despite ostensibly being a more full feature general purpose machine. This machine has 640 kilobytes of memory that's fully upgraded. This one has 256 kilobytes of memory. You'll see these keyboards are very different. So this is a um, beam spring keyboard. Actually, the way I got this system, I got it very inexpensively as salvage. And that was because someone found out that this was out there and asked whether or not I was into keyboards. And when I said I was not terribly into keyboards, I'm more into computers and terminals and such, they went ahead and passed me the, the information to go ahead and get this system because in a lot of cases, the keyboard is removed from the word processor because it's so much more valuable than the rest of the system. So that's really sad. It's good to see this one kept intact. Do you hear the beam spring? That's the sound there. Um, this is the Model F keyboard. This is also a very desirable keyboard. <laughs> so, but it is a more compact, less expensive version of the beam spring. So uh, here you can, still very clicky a little different there. Those are the big differences between these two systems. Now, let's take a look at some software. First off, we have the software the Display Writer was designed to run, TextPack. There were other packages like ReportPack and the Asynchronous Communications package, but TextPack was really the main show. This was equivalent to Microsoft Word or Google Docs today and replaced typewriters and earlier electronic word processors. Using this software is really a strange experience. The level of responsiveness and tactile feedback and the deep integration of the keyboard and software is really pleasant, but the after image of the text and learning curve makes it difficult for me to feel productive. For the IBM PC, on the other hand, it is all about DOS. DOS was the precursor to Windows for IBM personal computers and is still in use today in innumerable dark corners of our digital world. This is the quintessential early 80s computing experience, before Windows 3 really took over the personal computing operating system world. Here is a fun little game called Round 42 to show you what the system can do with the color display and adapter. Now, what is really fun for me is that very shortly after I received the Display Writer, someone was able to recover DOS for the Display Writer. 
This is MS-DOS 1.25 booting up. Now the most interesting thing I can do with it at the moment is run basic. But it is still pretty neat seeing the display writer show off the fact that it is a full computer underneath its glorified typewriter use case. There was also CPM for the display writer and I hope to have a copy of that soon. So that's it. The end of the standalone word processors and terminals in the form of this beautifully capable machine and the beginning of the personal computer era as summed up in this really neat little piece of equipment. Two IBM computers separated only by one year but representing very different design aesthetics and different eras in computing. I hope you found this interesting and have a great day.